Make sure to use our code FLIPSIDE to get a two-week subscription to the Key Collector app. At number 10, we have Star Wars number 10, the 1 in 25 Dotson variant. It's the first appearance of the Starlight Squadron. And you also have the first cameo appearance of Mark Matten, who is an important part of the Star Wars Rebels Ghost Crew, and also Freya. You also have Shara Bay, who is on the cover. And she's the leader of Starlight S Squadron and the mother of Poe Dameron. And Star Wars, Star Wars likes to use characters that are related to important characters on screen. Definitely a good play for uh, Rogue Squadron and Rangers of the New Republic, Disney+. Plus. It came out after the announcement of these two projects. And I could definitely see one or more of these five that form the Starlight Squadron to be in one of these projects. And I think there's a pretty decent chance that Mark Matten shows up in the Tano show because she's going to need all the help she needs to go find Ezra. And if you saw the Star Wars Rebels finale, Mark Matten was a big part of the plan uh, with Ezra to go defeat Thrawn as a backup plan. At number nine, we have the Punisher, number 218, the 1 in 25 Smallwood variant. When I looked up values, I was actually kind of surprised with all the Armor War um, rumors or whatnot. $30 shipped raw. CGC 9.8s, 30-day average, $50 shipped. Multiple sales. Compared to 219, it's only the first cameo. Um, the CGC label basically states Frank Castle dons the War Machine armor in cameo. And then first cover appearance, 219, you get the full appearance. You know, what if they say, hey, you know what? Forget another Frank Castle origin story. Let's bring them in as taking the War Machine um, mantle. And let's do it, you know, during Armor Wars, probably not the first season, but I'm saying, or spinoff, obviously after the Ironheart series because War Machine is important to Ironheart. For our number eight book, we have New Avengers number 33, the one in 25 Hawkeye Avengers movie variant. So when Mr. Long Short first showed us this uh, set of photorealistic variants to us months ago, I, I asked, I remember asking, is this a photo or a painting? It, it's a painting. It's done by Ryan, me, me, me nerding. Um, I, please excuse me if I'm screwing up his name. But uh, he, he did a, a set of these photorealistic covers around the time of Age of Ultron. So like me, you might be asking, who is Ryan Mian nerding? And how do you exactly pronounce his name? And why <laughs> hasn't he done more covers? Well, here's your answer. It's actually pretty interesting. He is a baller. And he's a really busy guy. That's why he hasn't done more covers. Uh, he is the head of visual development at Marvel Studios. I just started following him on IG, and his work is incredible. He does all the concept designs for the MCU. He goes back with Fa back in the day with Favreau. If you like the MCU, you will love his his IG. Back to the book, it's it's typically less than twenty dollars if it's found online or in the wild. But in 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 total honesty, it can be hard to find. Uh, it was it wasn't heavily ordered. Who ordered twenty five copies of New Avengers uh, thirty three? Uh, you know, back in the day. Um, but I, I see some catalyst for more demand. First of all, there's the Hawkeye Disney Plus show, and you know, like a lot of these stars, there's going to be an inevitable Jeremy Renner signing, right? And people are going to be scrambling around for you know Jeremy. Uh, Renner co uh, covers. While there's multiple photo or photorealistic variants or covers for Scar Joe and Chris Evans and Robert Downey Jr. and Samuel Jackson, there's not that many uh, with Jeremy Renner. Um, so I think that kind of makes this one stick out from the bunch. Coming in at you at number seven, we have Star Wars number seven, the one in 25 variant. This is the first journal of Ben Kenobi, uh, and it's an in-canon story. And this is the first Obi-Wan 
story after Clone Wars on the Star Wars timeline. He talks a lot to uh, Qui-Gon Jinn, who uh, Liam Neeson's been rumored to be coming back um, into play for that show. So we see some of that that could be adapted for that TV show. Later on, you actually see Luke actually holding the journal of Ben Kenobi as it helps him uh, look for R2-D2 in a later issue. At number six, we have Secret Wars, Secret Love, number one, second print. This was a 2015 book. This is the second print. First print actually is the exact same cover. It just doesn't have the, the little second print uh, notation on the top. First of all, obviously, this is Miss Marvel. She's really hot. She's got the Disney Plus show coming up. She's got many books that are spiking. Uh, this hasn't been on the radar for her. This isn't one of her books. Second off, this is a David Nakayama cover, DNA. I love his art. I love how flexible he is. Obviously, this is a very different style than a lot of his covers. Third box is checks off as being a low print, late printing. The first printing of this had around 25,000 copies. I have not been able to find numbers on this one. Maybe a lot of people might not recognize it, but this is a very classic homage of our love story number one. As far as the guts of this, there's really not a lot there. Uh, this is all a cover play for me. At number five, we have Avengers Academy number one from 2010. This book features a lot of really young um, Marvel heroes. Frankly, a lot of characters that we don't hear every day. Um, it currently sells around uh, the $20 range, so relatively affordable in the current market. And we get appearances of characters such as Hazmat, Vale, Striker, Finesse, and Metal. Um, while none of these characters are sort of of the same um, caliber as Miles, Kamala, uh, or any of those characters, the, what we found is that the young, uh, the young Marvel characters have huge appeal. And uh, given the number that we see in this book, if one hits, uh, this book will go crazy. If two hits, forget about it, it's gone. Um, given the buy-in, it's a really, really smart play and something that makes sense to grab in your collection if you see it. At number four, we have Dark Avengers number one, the Audi Granoff 2009 New York City Comic Con Midtown exclusive. This is their first team appearance of Dark Avengers. You have first cover and first appearance of Norman Osborn as the Iron Patriot and then multiple other um, Dark Avenger firsts in the gut. Um, this particular book, Midtown 2009, I guess New York Comic Con slash Midtown exclusive by Addy Granoff is actually a uh, same cover as the one in 50. Um, but um, this one was exclusive for the Midtown booth at the Comic Con. And I'm not sure about the numbers for this book, so I'm not even going to go there. But I know that, you know, there's not that many in the wild. Sales 20 to 40 with a $30, I guess you can say FMV, fair market value. I checked the census, 59 CGC, 9 eighths on the census. I was shocked on that. I, I think this book is seriously flying under the radar. And the fact that this is a, such a smaller print run or orders or however you want to put it compared to um, the number one issue, um, regular issue, regular cover, I think this book is a slam dunk. On the nine eights, uh, the 30 day average for nine eights selling was about uh, 200 to 210 shipped. But at the conclusion of, uh, of this analysis, I guess I would say after watching uh, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, I started asking myself, are we actually seeing the MCU's, you know, vintage process of, of, of recruiting their own Dark Avengers or Thunderbolts? basically in front of our eyes. All right. At number three, we have Venom versus Carnage number one. This is the uh, first appearance of uh, Pat Mulligan, uh, who becomes Toxin in issue two, uh, the spawn of Carnage. Although I don't think that was the play. I think uh, clearly this is a uh, movie spec driven uh, and not to mention uh, the amazing Clayton Crane cover. Uh, I think he draws Carnage better than anybody. Uh, this book's going for like 
it's kind of sporadic. You can get it for 20 on a good day, 40 on a, a high day. Nine eights go for anywhere between like a hundred to $150. Yeah. I mean, I, th I think, I think part of the play in this book is, is, you know, as you know, Venom two plays out, we see carnage, we see Venom, you know, this book will certainly pop on the radar for a lot of speculators. And, you know, we could see massive price escalation. At our number two book, we have Miss Marvel number one, the one in 25 Pacelli variant. So Disney put out a Miss Marvel tra um, trailer featuring uh, Kamala inside her bedroom. And uh, right when I saw it, I thought this cover has a lot of potential becoming an actual scene in her Disney Plus series. Kamala Khan using her powers to get out of bed, pressing the snooze button. This variant issue is only going to increase in value regardless if this scene is in it or not, um, as soon as we approach the TV series. It's just a, a fun Sarah Pacelli cover. Um, it's really undervalued. Um, I, I believe it's a definitely a must have in anybody's uh, Miss Marvel collection. Raw copies run around 40 to $60. And nine eights are pretty tough to find. I got to give kudos on this pick. That train of thought is perfect because you know Kevin Feige has these covers in his office somewhere that he wants to put on screen. We've seen them before. Uh, it's almost easier to identify what covers he's going to have in on screen than it is to figure out what plots or you know what characters, uh, how he's going to play out the story. So I, I think this is a this is a gimme and it's a great idea. And for our number one book. We have Young Avengers number six. You know, specking on comic books is sort of sort of tail of two two sides of the coin. One is finding books that nobody has realized or thinking about, and then sometimes it's buying books that are right in front of your face at really attractive values. One, it's the first appearance of stature. Two, it's really the first appearance of Kate Bishop as Hawkeye. Three. It's really Kate Bishop's first cover appearance. Now, I know some people look after me and say it's actually issue five. There's a bunch of faces on that cover. Her face is there, but nobody's going to really buy that as her first cover appearance. I get that one of the faces is hers, but they're so indescript, you can't really tell. Um, when you put all that together, this is the kind of book when it hits, you'll look back and say, how come I didn't have five or six of these? This goes for 60 or 70 bucks. It's going to be a, mo a modern monster, I think. Uh, the print run wasn't small. It wasn't huge, but it wasn't small. It was probably in that sort of sixty to 70000 range. Um, but we've seen plenty of books with print runs like that that have gone absolutely parabolic. Um, I think this book has that potential. And I think the window to grab this before it goes nuts is relatively small. And it's one I'd be adding to the collect your collection if you can right now. If anybody watching has seen a newsstand copy of this book, Leave it in the comments. I'd like to know because I've been hunting for it for a long time in newsstand and I can't find it. Yeah, man. Same here. I don't think it exists, but if anybody's seen it, please, please, please let us know because that would be a genuine ghost. Thank you for joining. Please check out our other content by liking and subscribing to our channel, Tales from the Flipside. Tomorrow night, catch the Wednesday night presser with Ultra Maximus and may the force be with you. Always.